What is 3D bioprinting? It's a technology that has rapidly advanced in the past five years. Um, the technology, uh, the researchers have found that uh, many ways to utilize it in the medical uh, fields for medical purposes. Um, the teams have been able to print skin, tissues, and organs. And the newest development is the 3D printing of the production of blood vessels. Okay, this is a bioprinter. It's the BioFab <laughs> 4500. <laughs> and yeah, as you can tell, it's printing a heart. But um, essentially, this is the printer that makes the buses. Okay, so basically, how it works they print in the little spheres into a hydrogel layer. They're kind of like in little sheets. And then they attach all the sheets together to form the ending vessel. It's pretty cool. Alright, when did all this start? All of it started back in 2002, but they did not make the actual first 3D bioprinter until 2008. And within 2014 is when it's really expanded. And they've only been, they've been doing it through the hydrogel, and they've mainly been doing it on rats, but out of last year and within this year, they have had two successful surgeries with 3D bioprinting out of humans. All right, this research took place in Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. Okay, the research will reduce the testing in animals and it will also uh, prevent the need for human transplants. Uh, due to the high demand of it, uh, there's so many humans that do have to donate. This will cut down, you know, the actual a human having to donate. There's actually a shortage of donors too. Like there's not yes. a lot of people actually willing to donate and stuff too. Um, and this research came from chapter four of the circulatory system. Um, the main sites were Science Daily, Live Science, Extreme Tech, um, and 3dprint.com. And this is uh, one of the cases locally. This was actually on our local news, Channel 6, this morning, out of a two-year-old little boy who had a surgery um, this past February. We build a disturbing medical condition. Garrett was born with a heart condition called Tetralogy of Flow with absent pulmonary valve. Which means Garrett's breathing tubes to his lungs were not working. It caused his airways to be kind of like a wet noodle in a sense. That um, they were there, they were normal size, but they were floppy. Because of that, Garrett would spend his first 19 months of life in a hospital on a ventilator. He was completely on life support. In December of 2013, something went wrong. Garrett got sick and his condition was worsening. <coughs> Peterson's had to do something. Well, we thought we were going to lose him. That's when Jake remembers seeing a news story out of Michigan about a 3D printer saving a kid's life. Yeah, that's nice. Look at that. That's beautiful. Within weeks, Garrett was in surgery at the University of Michigan's Children's Hospital to have a new set of breathing tubes put in, made by a 3D printer. They um, took a 3D scan of Garrett's airways and then they printed that out and then they printed a 3D splint that goes on the outside of his airways to exactly match Garrett's airways and perfectly fit right over the top. And then they sewed that splint to Garrett's airways and to hold them open. It was history in the making, only the second surgery like this to be done in the country, and it was a success. All right, there we go. Yeah. There we go, up and down. For the first time in his life, Garrett was breathing on his own. Really fabulous. So we know that the splint's working. He's able to ventilate both lungs for the first time. What's amazing.